Good morning, um, welcome, and uh, <clears throat> thank you to the organizers for inviting, for inviting me here. Um, it is certainly a privilege and a pleasure to be here at this uh, exciting and interesting event. Uh, first, I need to apologize for my voice because I have a slight cold and uh, uh, sore throat, so I, but I hope with the help of the technology uh, you'll be able to hear my presentation uh, in order. So I was invited to speak at this panel which deals with the disconnection, the issue of digital disconnection, and I thought my contribution to this panel would be along the lines of uh, uh, the disconnection between democracy and the Internet. This might seem somehow counterintuitive, uh, given the fact that uh, Internet and new media have uh, long been hailed and cherished as uh, technologies which have a great potential for democracy, which can rejuvenate civic engagement and bring new forms of political participation. And these things are all relevant and they have happened, we have witnessed them, but at the same time, and increasingly so, over the course of the last several years, in the discourse about the role of uh, digital media in a society, we have been witnessing the increasing dominance of the more dystopian perspective, and um, uh, the, the one em emphasizing potentially negative uh, consequences of uh, the internet and new media for, for democracy, for, for modern societies. So my presentation will follow along the lines of this kind of argumentation more than the optimistic one, even though I do not consider myself to be an, a real internet dystopian or, or prophet of a digital apocalypse like some other uh, uh, theorists and authors. But I am concerned, genuinely concerned, about some of the negative consequences and uh, risks uh, which stem from the increasing uh, availability and use of online technologies, risks which put into question or which challenge some of the established institutions and pillars of uh, democracy, and in particular, news media and professional journalism. As you know, uh, as we all know from uh, textbooks, uh, mass media have always been regarded as one of the most important institutions of democracy, or pill one of the most important pillars of the democratic system, uh, as this uh, picture illustrates. Um, they, according to these the normative theories, uh, they were supposed to be providing us with uh, relevant, trustworthy, accurate news. They were supposed to be um, uh, serving as, as uh, platforms uh, for public discussion and also, uh, and very importantly, um, uh, performing the role of, of, of a watchdog for democracy. That means uh, keeping uh, the, the elites, the, the political elites and power elites in general accountable. So for years, for decades, these roles have been performed, even though imperfectly, as we know, have been performed by newspapers, radio, uh, television. Uh, however, uh, these normative roles have been uh, challenged uh, with the arrival of the digital, sorry, the digital technologies uh, and the internet uh, from the 90s onwards, and with the establishment of what is called usually the new media ecosystem. This ecosystem, as you know, is generally characterized by uh, the unprecedented amount of information channels, uh, news sources, media technologies, and generally what uh, we can call communicative abundance, as uh, to borrow a, a phrase or term for, from the British philosopher of media, John Keane. And in this new media ecosystem, uh, the traditional media are increasingly uh, losing its, its formerly privileged status and importance. And it is also because of the, of the rise of the um, news sources which are generated and managed by the users themselves in a form of uh, what is called citizen journalism. Um, <clears throat> so uh, this rise of citizen journalism is basically questioning and challenging the whole journalistic profession, because if everybody can be a journalist nowadays, as the narrative goes, then journalism is basically no longer a, a privileged, a specific, specific profession or trade which requires specific skills and, and uh, abilities, 
which needs to be learned and performed in line with certain standards of the profession. So all these requirements are basically weakened because of this uh, availability of technologies which enable citizens to become journalists uh, uh, themselves, or at least not the journalists, but the providers of, of information online. Uh, and this is, of course, enabled by the uh, rapid growth of the social media use around the world, as some of these latest statistics document. According to them, nowadays, basically every third person in the world is a user of social media, of some social media platform. 2.3 2 billion people nowadays. And uh, uh, almost 80% of those uh, are accessing the social network sites from mobile using their mobile phones, which further increases this capacity uh, of uh, users to become civic journalists, to broadcast or um, send uh, to, to, to the internet to the world information which they catch on their mobile phones themselves. Uh, and increasingly, social networks are also being used as new sources by the population. These are just some data from, uh, from uh, the United States. It might be slightly different in other countries, but uh, it is definitely a general trend. For example, um, 50%, around 50% of uh, the US users of Twitter and Facebook use these, in, uh, these uh, social network sites as sources of news. And increasingly, again, uh, many of those people use those, those uh, networks as primary sources of news. So they do not go to the online sites of the main, uh, main uh, newspapers or other traditional information providers, but they are content with what they see and find on these networks. So this is all uh, basically illustrating and further exacerbating the general crisis of the news media industry, which we are witnessing today, or these days. Um, crisis which affects mainly the newspapers, the newspaper print industry. Uh, there are, again, again some uh, data from uh, several countries, uh, including the UK. This is a chart illustrating the steady decline of uh, newspaper circulation, of daily newspaper circulation, over the course of some uh, 13, 14 years. Uh, this is a, another graph showing the huge and sudden drop in advertising revenues on the US daily newspaper market. Uh, the drop occurred sometime around 2005-06 uh, and it coincided clearly with uh, the general financial crisis uh, in the States. But it didn't stop afterwards, so the, the, the trend goes on, so which means that it hasn't been caused just by the crisis of, uh, on the financial markets, but it has been caused by the arrival of, uh, of the Internet. And unfortunately, as you know, uh, Newspaper industries are still unable to really offset the losses incurred by um, uh, the, the online, uh, online media, um, uh, in, uh, the, the, the losses in, in the traditional newspaper market by the revenues from, from their online, online uh, versions. These are some data from my country, Czech Republic. Again, in line with the general trend, we have been witnessing a steady declined by around 10% uh, a year, so newspaper industry has been losing 10% of circulations, uh, total circulations per year. Altogether, over the course of uh, about six years, 35% uh, 30, of, uh, of a decline of the industry. What is important from the point of view of my presentation today is that not just, that there, haven't been, there haven't been just uh, uh, declining uh, revenues or circulations, but also we have been seeing a declining trust in mass media. Around the, the world, these are some data from the U US again. It shows an interesting trend that uh, the share of people who express their faith in the news they have been acquiring from, uh, from uh, traditional news media, newspapers, TV and radio, uh, has dropped from about 70% in the 70s, mid 70s, to the contem currently about 40%. In the Czech Republic, we have seen very much similar trend. At the beginning of uh, the 90s or in the mid 90s, there was still a huge trust uh, in the media, in the general population. 
but uh, over the, two, two, the last two decades, this, this trust has dropped quite significantly, and now, nowadays, uh, less than 50% of people express their, their faith, their trust in newspapers and or, or television. This is one possible reason why it has happened and why it does not seem to be, uh, why there is uh, little help or little hope for this trend to reverse. My predecessor, uh, the first speaker of this panel, already pointed out to this negative trend across Central and Eastern Europe. And I will just use this as an opportunity to add to what he was saying about the problem of changing media ownership structures in Central and Eastern Europe. These are uh, some of the main media owners in the Czech Republic currently. They're all, uh, they, they all um, belong to the business elites, the richest people in the country, and they have all acquired their, the, their media from uh, foreign transnational companies which have left Czech Republic uh, over the last uh, two or three years. The one person uh, in the left uh, upper corner is uh, famously our current Minister of Finance and Deputy Prime Minister Andrei Babiš, who, as I have just said, is a, an active and very important politician, but at the same time the biggest media mogul of, of the country, owning the biggest publishing house. Next to him is, uh, is Mr. Křetinsky, who acquired the largest tabloid publishing house uh, last year from, from a German uh, company, Ringier. Uh, at the bottom left corner, there's uh, Marek Dospiva, a uh, CEO of a, a huge investment company, Penta, who now, now owns basically all regional newspapers in the country. And finally, Mr. Uh, Valenta, who is a senator and at the same time owner of uh, several media, including the in most influential online news, news platform in the Czech Republic. And you've already heard the reasons from my predecessor uh, why these people invest in the media in the times of crisis. It is because they do not need to care for profit. They don't regard the investment into media as an economic investment, but rather as an opportunity to gain uh, a platform which enables them to use media as a, as a PR tool and as, as, a, as an instrument of pressure. This is not just a hypothesis, it's, it has been confirmed recently by one of those people, Mr. Dospiva, who uh, basically confessed in an interview that the reason why they bought this chain of regional newspapers, becoming one of the biggest publishing publishers in the country, is in that they could have some kind of assurance that they will, that it will be more difficult for anyone to irrationally attack them. So uh, clearly, this person claims that they own the media in order to have an instrument of deterrent so others wouldn't dare to attack them. So clearly this, this contradicts the idea of independent, autonomous media. Who should decide for themselves what are they going to be printing and uh, um, um, writing about? So no wonder, in a way, that people are turning away from traditional media sources in these circumstances and turning to the internet to uh, try to find uh, alternative sources of information. This is just a, a visual representation of how internet looks like nowadays. It doesn't have anything to do with my presentation, I just like the picture, so <laughs> I just wanted to show it to you. Uh, but there is a dark side to this information cornucopia which we are experiencing online nowadays, and the dark side has to do with, uh, obviously, the huge amount of misinformation, hoaxes, rumors online, which, which is uh, available online. My predecessor already talked about it, so I do not need to go too much into details. I just wanted to say that recently the World Economic Forum has uh, uh, labeled the, the danger of uh, spreading disinformation online as one of the greatest risks for contemporary societies. So it is something very, very serious. We have witnessed uh, this phenomenon quite clearly uh, in case of the current uh, migration crisis. Again, this is a topic you are well familiar with. Uh, so you know how quickly internet turned into 
an environment infested with hoaxes and uh, false rumors, false information about immigrants, about their alleged crimes, which have been allegedly recorded and taped and put online. As it turned out, in most cases, these videos and pictures have been fabricated, taken out of context, taken from events which, which took place uh, years ago in different countries, often in Russia. But it didn't stop people from sharing them widely, from uh, uh, liking them, from expressing their anger at what's, uh, what was going on, and clearly uh, supporting the prejudices and uh, hate towards, towards immigrants. Luckily, there are some counter-initiatives against this. This is one of them. You probably, maybe you've heard about it, that there is this hoax map uh, managed by one German woman who tries to picture uh, all those alleged manipulated events uh, which uh, are circulating online and which uh, are supposed to represent some kind of crimes committed by, by refugees. So she created this map. Currently, it contains more than 180 cases of, of such hoaxes. But of course, this is a, a one initiative which will not turn the, the wheels uh, against this, this, uh, this, uh, this problem, this, this phenomenon. The problem is deeper. It's, because it's, it's a problem of the clear lack of accountability, the inability of people to uh, check the quality or unwillingness of people to check the quality of information online. Uh, and so the problem, <coughs> uh, I'm afraid, uh, will stay here for some uh, time to come. It will not simply go away, and unless some drastic measures are taken to reduce the control, the, the, the internet, to limit internet freedoms, which I believe would be mis uh, unfortunate and it would be a mistake. Just to borrow a quote from Thomas Jefferson, who said, if you want to limit or restrict freedom in order to protect safety and security, you are likely to lose both. And I think that uh, concerns uh, the problem with the internet hoaxes and uh, misinformation as well. So what we need instead is to put more emphasis on trying to uh, get better journalism, professional journalism. This is a quote from a US expert on communication technologies, Clay Shirky, who claimed that we don't need newspapers in a form of you know, printed press, but we need journalists. We need professional journalism nowadays more than ever. We need people who follow certain professional codes and who are going to play this role of gatekeepers, selecting the correct, accurate information for us. And if this journalists, if these journalists, I'm finish, finishing, uh, are currently under pressures because of the owners or because of the states and governments in Central and Eastern Europe, we need to try to make this online journalism work better than it does today. We need people to learn to pay for online news, because only if online news, ma news making can be turned into a profitable business, it will also become more independent. So for the sake of democracy, I believe we should try to help the journalists in this mission. Thank you very much. Thank you.